Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Okay, continuing our series leading up to uh, independence, we're looking at all things national, and in particular, uh, that have to do with restructuring. It seems to be the buzzword at the moment. Uh, different aspects to restructuring. You recall that uh, at the beginning of the week, uh, we started off with uh, uh, something that uh, Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu had called attention to, uh, namely restructuring, but in particular, fiscal federalism. Uh, that is one thing that we're missing. We call ourselves the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, well, people say until you have fiscal federalism, you know, it's a bit like we the people in the Nigerian constitution. People know what they think about that particular phrase, we the people. And um, <laughs> this morning, well, we have with us uh, Morenika Babinting Ashaye, Chairman, Accounting, Education and Research Services, as well as Chartered Accountant, Tax Specialist and uh, an Educator as well. She has also been in public service most of her life. Thank you very much for coming on, ma'am. Thank you very much. Indeed. And uh, our friend, Mr. Johnson Chuku, Managing Director, Kauri Asset Management Limited. He's an investment uh, banker as well as an economic analyst. Thank you, as always, for coming on, Mr. Chuku. My pleasure. Indeed. Um, let me start with you. Not doing, let me do the African <laughs> thing, you know, uh, with ladies first, but I will come to Madam later. <laughs> now, uh, the ruling party, APC, as you know, you know, since it's a public document, the manifesto includes this whole matter of fiscal federalism as an objective, and that um, when in power, uh, if in power, or just for existing as a party, it will cause the National Assembly to uh, amend the Constitution such as to facilitate fiscal federalism. Now, here we are, uh, two years in. Um, I don't know that anybody is having that particular conversation, but then perhaps I'm not on top of all the conversations. Give me impressions, <laughs> if you will, Johnson. Okay, I think some people are discussing that, particularly the party. I think the party has set up a committee mm -hmm. or a group to review the concept of um, federalism, to look at the structure, to address the agitations for, um, that is going on now. Yes, that's those uh, agitations yes, on the one hand. Yes. So, I mean, the party, I understand it. I think the LFI, uh, the governor of Cardinal State, is the chairman of that committee mm. of the ruling political party. Mm. But you also have to relate with the fact that the party came about as a result of the merger of three tendencies. You had the ACN, you had the CP, um, uh, uh, and then you had the uh, an arm of PDP that joined to form the current government. So you have tendencies that had different orientations. Obviously, the inclusion of federal issue of federalism into the manifesto of the party came mm -hmm. from one of the tendencies. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem, as we look at it today, that that tendency that included issue of federalism, through federalism into the manifesto of the party, is in a position to drive okay. the fruition of that ambition. I think that's the way I would see it from, from a layman's point of view. Okay. Well, you know what? Thank you very much. We'll come back to that. Uh, now, uh, Madam, how important Personally, do you consider the whole concept of federal, uh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, fiscal federalism? It is actually key to unity. It is key to unity. It is key to good governance. Because, you see, what I have seen in our constitution is that we had a system that the British had before they left. And we now brought in the uh, federal system. Instead of us to abolish the system totally mm. that the British left, we now started building on that. It's like the British had a bungalow, built a bungalow, and we now started putting pillars side by side in front and side, and then we say we are having federal, we are building, you know, stories upon. There's no way it will work. You have in our constitution federal government, government of the federation, and who is the head? The president. And we have a lot of expenses mm -hmm. for federal government, mm -hmm. for government of, uh, of the federation. For God's sake, why? We are wasting taxpayers' resources. If there's going to be a federal government, let that be federal government. Let us give to the federal government the work that the federal government should do. But these tendencies, these political tensions and pullings, not everybody pulling in the same direction that mm. um, uh, Johnson spoke about, uh, can you, can, can, do you see that, well, that probably is part of the problem? 
It is, it is naturally part of the problem. But I mean, as he said, it was in the manifesto of uh, APC. Mm. You see, what, I, what surprises me with APC government is as if they, are no, they were not prepared. They wanted the position, but they were not prepared. Because this issue of uh, fiscal federalism, should have, they should have gotten a paper ready okay. for it. Mm. So that immediately they come, because nobody, Ashwa Jutinubu has gone through the government. Although the president went through the government during the uh, military era, but nobody will study our constitution and will not know that it is a constitution for confusion. If you study that constitution, yeah. is you don't, for example, <coughs> the duties of presidents were not clearly stated. In the, in the, in the constitution, the president may, you know, within his discretion, mm -hmm. assign duty to a vice president. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. The vice president has its own office. The constitution must state clearly what the vice president should do, what the president should do. But now, even the governors, you know, you find some governors that they don't even allocate duties to the deputy governors. You have local government chairmen that will not even allow the deputy to do anything. <coughs> See, this the structure, you know, restructuring that people are talking about. Exactly. We want to be clear. Exactly. We, which kind of government do we have? Federation? If it is federation, we must assign duties to the federal government. The government can, the federal government cannot be talking about primary, basic, universal education. When we have local government, when we have state government. Now we have federal hospitals, we have uh, unity schools, we have federal, 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 so many establishments. And hardly, hardly anything or even resources for the states. Johnson, exactly. coming back to you, how does this impact? Because at the end of the day, uh, people talk about, when you talk about democracy <coughs> and uh, the economics, people talk about a political economy. Uh, how, how does all of this affect uh, the economy, which is an integral part, no doubt, in the whole matter of... Um, of sort of participative democracy? Well, I think that's the core of the problem. And that's obviously why we're having when I made the French accusations. In the first place, when we talk of fed fiscal federalism, we have to situate that in a federal structure that is economically viable. Today, we have a political structure that is unviable. We have 36 states. Of the 36 states, about 24 are heavily indebted. Mm -hmm. About that same number cannot, on a monthly basis, from their federation allocation and from the internal generated revenue, pay salaries and wages to their employees. So, what does that tell us? That the current political structure is unviable. And I will let, let's do some basic arithmetic. You see, the greatest challenge we have when we talk of economic development of this country is our political structure. And in addressing the issue of federal, fiscal federalism, we have, to we have to look at the structure that will make Nigeria to be nimble, to be efficient to be economically viable. And when I made reference to statistics, states, let's just use, like I said, let's do mental arithmetic. Let's just look at the south, Southwest. There are six states in the Southwest. How do we have an economic structure that would make it possible for the states in the Southwest, for instance, I'm just using a Southwest mm -hmm. as an example, mm -hmm. to be, all be economically viable and be engaged in development? Mm -hmm. If you look at the budgets, at the federal level. You find out the budget for this year, I'll come back to the Southwest or any other regions. The budget for this year, capital expenditure budget is 2.24 trillion. Borrowing is 2.35 trillion. So in effect, every COBO that we spent on infrastructure is borrowed. We simply mean that the political structure consumes entirely, entire revenue that is generated. So for us to have a, an efficient economic framework, we must have a political framework. I come back to the states, the regions I was talking of. And which is why some of us are saying, look, why don't we go back to the 1963 constitution and go back to regions? Nigeria actually stopped developing after the creation of more than 90 states. In terms of the state's ability to build infrastructure, mm. it froze when the state went beyond 19. And when I, I was talking about it, regions, I mean the, each of the political regions, and I want to use the Southwest as an example. On average, 
a state governor in any of the southwest states collects about $750 billion million as security votes. I just want us to address the issue of wastages mm -hmm. because we're talking about economic issues. Mm -hmm. If you are taking same 50 million, I'm not saying that all of them are taking same. You could have those that are taking one, one billion, those that are taking 500. But let's say I can take an average of same 50 million every month. In a month, the six states will take, the governors will take 4.5 billion. That 4.5 billion is unaccounted in any way. You cannot put your hand at with what is spent on. If we have a single province or regional government in the Southwest, as we used to have under and let's even assume that the premier takes, instead of saying 50 million, takes 1 billion every month. You will have savings of 3.5 billion. In a year, from that security vote alone, I just want to drive from the point, we will save 42 billion from each region. I'm just assuming that at the other wastages are still there. If we save in the southwest for the two billion every year. And the death for two billion is committed to only road construction. And we are building stone based and iron based roads. And we're spending two hundred million every kilometer of the stone based road. We're going to do every year two hundred and ten kilometers of roads. In a year, in, in a, a time of four years, we'd have done more than a thousand kilometers. What is the number? What is the distance of the entire paved road in the southwest? In 10 years, we will build the entire road network, all the nooks and crannies in the southwest will have good roads. This is just so as one example. This is one example. You know. mm. Now, if you eliminate the security vote of the five governors and we're keeping, we're increasing one from mm. 750 to one, one billion, mm. you're going to eliminate five state houses of assembly, you're going to eliminate five executive councils, states of commissioners, and multiplicity of expenditures that are not necessary. So that is why revenue generated in this country, in as much as we're talking of fiscal federalism, is not even, I'm talking of even, if, assuming we maintain the same level of waste, you're gonna at least build the infrastructure that will catalyze economic growth in this country. If we do not address the structure, I'll come back yeah. to the other aspects. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't address the structure, then the fiscal federalism, as we know it, will not even be viable. Because in the first place, some of the units, federal units are so small, so economically unviable, mm. that even if they are trying to generate their own revenue, they can't. They cannot generate enough revenue to sustain the same. Take out the uh, allocation, a lot of the states will go flat. Well, w w Madam, the problem we have here is that um, the, the country is seen largely as an economic pie. And I'm just looking for my own, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm looking for my own, you know, slice of it, and then do what we do, what, what you do. You have experience in government, you know, in, uh, at the state level, uh, ma managing the economy of the state. Uh, tell us what it looks like and how different it might have been. Because what Johnson has just done has been to give us a sort of, you know, a, a model of what is possible. What are the challenges? Well, it's, uh, it's rather unfortunate and... Uh, basically, when we talk about restructuring, restructuring to ensure that effectiveness in what government does, mm. you know, whether state, local, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. is towards the people. Okay. You know. Okay. And I was uh, discussing with him when we were looking at uh, that we were looking at the um, constitutional objectives, fundamental objectives, which is Chapter Two, and. We, we said if it is possible that government can actually allocate resources to people, to the needs of the people, like health, education, the needy, all those things that were contained in the, in the uh, chapter two of the constitution, you know, both political, social, and economic, you know, orders. If government can face that and allocate resources, there won't be too much pie left to be stolen. Indeed. One moment, please. Mm. I'm going to go on a break now, but I'm going to come straight back to you for you to continue. Stay with us, please.
Welcome back. Still in the studio with us, Moreneke Babinti Ashai and Johnson Chuku. Now, to return to you, um, you we were talking about the, the, the pie, yes. the, the economic, the, the national pie that everybody wants a slice of. And you were just saying that this pie, if even judicially applied in the first place, there will be very little for people to, to be fighting be no, and struggling There will be nothing with. left. We will have to restructure everything. What we need to do now is to restructure that um uh, uh, the the fundamental objectives yeah. which is in the part two of the constitution we need to restructure it it's well it's well uh, it's, taken care you of you were saying if if resources were actually directed at the needs of the people of the people what we are doing at the moment we are planning for ministries we are not planning for the people our budget should be towards the people like how many people need health care like how many people need to go to the university, primary school, you know, what will be the provision? Mm -hmm. And what to what, do with them afterwards? And what we, to do with them after all. But the problem we are having is that the ego of government is causing us trouble in this country. The ego that they want to be the one to appoint the vice chancellor, the ego that they want to be the one to appoint the DG, you know, that is what is causing us problem because if government can just do what it has to do and allow people to function. Which is create an enabling environment, Which right? will create an enabling environment. Look at what is happening with the NGO bill at the moment. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would have been <laughs> glad if that NGO bill is meant for NGOs or projects that receive money from government, whether local, state, or federal. Because there are a lot of um, governor's wives, president wives, can you call, you know, and <laughs> you, they, they get money from government to do all these projects. Uh, so Those, it's, it's, that is government money. That is our money. And you think these are that part of the wastages? That is the one that is part of the that wastages. Are because that of is, the structure that, we that run is, presently. That is the one that the National Assembly should be worried about. How, how uh, <clears throat> people's money are used for one project or the other that are not accountable. So that should be part because, they, of course, they are supposed to be supporting their husbands mm -hmm, <laughs> in mm -hmm, the project, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. So if money is now being allocated to them yeah, to support sure. their husbands, that is what should concern the National Assembly. Not when an individual goes maybe abroad and so on, solicit for funds with a particular aim to help maybe people in his own vicinity. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you now say you bring the money to Abuja. We now tell you where to spend the money. <laughs> it's very crazy. When, when it goes back to uh, Johnson, it goes back to what, we were, what you were saying about these inefficiencies. But there, there might be inefficiencies. But there's a whole political class that depends on these inefficiencies. In fact, the way you are going, both of you as a more fact, um, you would great, uh, it would greatly scale back, scale down, uh, the, the, the political fat that we seem to have. Uh, do you think, what, do, what are your thoughts on whether we can get lean politically to have just enough to do the job efficiently? Okay, let me take us back to the 60s. And I keep making reference to the, someone like Chief Obafemi Awolowo. When he was the Premier of the, um, Western Nigeria, the resources at his disposal was no way compared to the resources that he displayed of the five, six governors of the Southwest. How come he built the Cocoa House, he built the uh, university, he built I mean, Ife, of Ife, he built roads, and several industries at that time? Because they are focused. And that was the different they attitude to governors. Yes, uh, yes I, I'm, I'm just coming in. Yes. Then the leakage pipes mm -hmm. were fewer. Mm -hmm. So the resources he had, he had to focus it on development. Back to your question. What has happened over time is that, apart from the state creation of the net, uh, uh, that was done immediately during the Civil War, that was supposed to diffuse station, subsequent <laughs> state creations were predicated on the need to build sharing structure. Yes. Structures for allocation, for sharing of national cake, as it so call it. National pie. <laughs> so, and then we kept expanding the number of states, mm. got to 19, got to 21, got to 27, eventually got to 36. So as to keep on spreading. So as to create mm. yeah. one, enough offices mm. for political exactly. children. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
so that they be in position to benefit from the national cake, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. enough offices or posts for the allocation of resources to their individual communities. And that's why we ended up with the sisters and 774 local governments. So each local government has a chairman, a vice chairman, secretary, this, 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 and councillors and supervisory councillors. In 774 units, each of them is not producing anything today. There's no local government that has built road in the last 10 years. Mm. They are all taken from the national cake. Then you have the state governments that have the governor, the deputy governor, the wife of the governor, the wife officer, the wife of the deputy governor, house of assembly, chairman, uh, speaker, deputy speaker, and what have you. That so, is why they said democracy so, is the government of the politicians, so, for the politicians <laughs> and by the politicians. Yes. So what are we doing now is that we need to address the current political situation. And I, let me sign this one, not a one, because this, like we said, this is a, a prelude to the independence celebration. If we do nothing, hmm. the doomsday is around the corner. And it's very simple. We, we just can't con continue like this, We right? build the structure, the political structure we have today to share all your world. All your world is going to be useless in the next 20 years. Hmm. If we do not restructure today, so as to build infrastructure, that will lead to productive activities in this country instead of a rent-based economic system. Then, that day will happen on us. If those who are enjoying it, the speakers, the senators, the House of Rep members, it will happen, it, the, the roof will fall on all of us. Very simple thing is that oil price went down last year. At some point, it dropped 32, 33 uh, dollars. The economy went into a recession. Oil, oil, oil production improved in the second quarter of this year. 1.84 million barrels a day, and oil price remained above uh, around 45 50 dollars, and the economy recovered. Go and look at the GDP performance in the second quarter of this year. Non oil sector, yes, grew, but the, the growth rate dropped from 0.72 percent to 0.45 percent. So, in terms of the non oil sector, we're seeing a declining uh, performance, but oil sector recovered from 11.6 for negative growth in the first quarter mm. to 1.64 positive growth and the economy turned the it, it built us out. So, and, and we can't rely so on that, is what the, you're saying. Today, the economy still remains an oil economy. And the value of oil is going to decrease because one, countries are threatening that it come 10 years, come 20 years from now, they're going to ban fossil fuel driven vehicles in their country. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh the yes. speed at which alternative energy is improving, technology is improving, it's it, as, astronomical. Look at solar energy. They are, California, 40% of their power supply is coming from solar, alternative energy. You're going to move towards that. Well, and then oil will become useless. But we, have, we, have, we don't have built the roads, we wouldn't have built the factories, we wouldn't have built the energy supply that will lead us to sustain this economy. Because we're still oil. wasting it. Maybe the most graphic example of that is the Gulf states, for instance, where oil is not a problem. Uh, they have the money, they've done all the development. Uh, if that had, if by the time we go, oil goes into this, decline that is being predicted in the next 20, 25 years, they, they are ahead because they, when, when they had it, they, they used it. Um, this seems to underline the fact more that we need to restructure out of where we are now. First of all, if you agree that essentially the structure we have now was created to, you know, uh, distribute largesse and patrimony and just make sure that every politician and his wife and his girlfriend and uh, extended family members were taken care of if you understand what i'm saying just exaggerating it slightly mm. uh, it, it's so obvious but the president the leader of the party hasn't taken those steps not to my knowledge to actively you know shall we say just op open up that whole thing in the um, apc uh, manifesto that fiscal federalism is the objective and the national assembly will be, you know, persuaded, uh, activated to indeed make way for this. So it looks like we're not taking it seriously yet, might be one, one form of criticism. We, we don't seem to be applying all these facts and figures that are being, you know, shared here. Yeah, uh, what I observe is that what is in the party's manifesto has not actually been taken totally by the president. Because if you look at the agenda of the president, that restructuring is not in its agenda. I think that is just party's agenda. Mm. Well, well, fiscal federalism. Yes, yes. It, I don't think 
the, 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 the president. He, he is not he, part of his he agenda. He hasn't signed on to it. Yes, because there were, I think from his camp, we were being told that nobody can intimidate the president, force him to do any restructuring. And that is why I said the party was actually eager to have power. But all those nitty gritty that should have been done were not you know, were not done before coming to the office. What I would sincerely, if it can be taken up by the president, this restructuring should be done before 2019, so that we stop wasting people's money, we stop wasting taxpayers' money, we stop making our people feel, you know, that they are part of the system. You see, when I look at what happens in the rural area, if you want to know whether a, 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 a nation is developing, the first place to look is the rural area. Yes, you yes. Know. But what but do you mean by restructuring that you wish could be done by, by 2019? Are we talking about... Before 2019. Yes, before 2019. Are you talking about uh, taking steps towards fiscal federalism? A true fiscal yes, federalism? Yes, yes, true fiscal uh, federalism. Because what I mean is that there will be one federal government. Not federal government, not government of the federation. There will be that central. Maybe we should forget the word federal or federation. <coughs> mm -hmm. There will be that central government. Mm. We, the people of Nigeria, as mm. it has been stated in the Constitution, <laughs> we will tell the federal government what we want the federal government to take care of. Because we know best. Yes. We know best. Because the, the federal is. government shouldn't actually take more than five items, you know, like uh, national economy, uh, foreign affairs. Well, of course, it can handle internal affairs, just doing re regulation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, defense. Uh, defense. That is very important. So, to me, the central mm. government should not cater for more than five items. Every other thing should go to zona. How we want us to have the z uh, six zones, the uh, six uh, zones instead of three regions. Six is better because you find that at a time when we're having the regions, the middle. Well, yes. the middle belt, yeah. they will mm. say, oh, mm. we are not taking mm. uh, care of. So if we have these uh, sea zones, I would want us to have zona president. Okay. We have, yes, no, we that have we have the central president, which is national president. Mm -hmm. When we have, just like you have the regional mm -hmm. prime but, minister yeah. and so on, we now have zona president. That we actually bring a lot of... Okay, welcome back. And um, we're looking at fiscal federalism as it relates to, you know, uh, the whole debate for restructuring. Now, as, as we know, not everybody's on board with the whole idea of restructuring because it scares some people. Uh, the, the autonomy that is being spoken about, whereas it is thought would benefit some people, uh, there are others that feel that, well, they, they, they might not be as strong as they are under this current handout kind of a situation. What what would one say? Because I imagine we'd have to have a policy of no man left behind. In this case, no 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 people left behind. Well, I think that's uh, a fallacious uh, assumption by those who are scared of the unknown. And I'll give you an answer there. She mentioned six regions. Let's take each, each of the six regions. The Southwest is relatively industrialized. If you have a regional government in the Southwest and you focus on industries, it has a seaport, it has the airport. It could be a major hub, transport hub in the country, or in the, in the region. In fact, the, the West African region, Lagos can turn to a, 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 a hub, an aviation hub. So the Southwest can build the industries and be very economically viable. Let's look at the Southeast. The Southeast is very mercantile in nature. And you have pockets of small and small scale enterprises that are buying on, in our nature, in Newey that could, if the government focuses on them, grow into economic hubs. Let's look at the, the North Central. The North Central is a huge uh, agrarian region. They produce all the tubers we consume here. So that should be able to sustain the economy of the North Central. Same with the Northeast. 
Look at the North West, which includes Kano Jigawa. Kano alone used to be an industrial hub. You had the textile factories, you had some factories that died because government never really paid attention to them. Kano is a major commercial center. It is said that in the 60s, that Dubai was about at the same level of development as Kano. And I go to Kano almost, if I go to Kano every month, at minimum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that the economy in Kano can be activated to not only be self-sustaining, to a help in expanding the growth of that region. Look at Kaduna. Kaduna is an industrial, used to be an industrial hub. What happened to all the textile factories in Kaduna? Kaduna is part of the southwest. I mean, I mean, northwest. I'm just giving you, look at the south-south. So, so, so in effect, there is no region. Everybody has, every region has a, some it's area comparative of comparative advantage. advantage there is no know. region that is so disadvantaged. What has happened so far is because the incentive system we have built over time discourages people to be creative, to be industrious. So we have built a system that nobody, the governors are not bothering about building infrastructure to support economic activities. What the governors are about doing is send their commissioner to the Abuja mm. every month, mm. collect the money, mm. share mm. it, mm. and then wait for the next, end mm. of the next mm. month. How, how, madam, does all of this board now for that, that thing we, we all want, foreign direct investment? We want foreigners to come in and participate in our economy. Uh, but with the structure the way it is, does it, does it harm or does it help you know, that, that whole effort? For me, um, I will say it may not necessarily help because these foreign investors, first of all, they will be looking at how you treat your local investors. And we have a wide range of opportunities in this country that if we treat our local investors very well, they will perform better than foreign investors. You see, when governments shout about foreign investors, they bring in money. These foreign investors may not necessarily bring in money because what we have found out is that they come here with little money, they go to our various banks, they collect the money that our local investors <coughs> would, have, would have used in economic development, and by the time they are going back, they have already repatriated their own money and then some of them will leave us with debts. But how are they able to and do that? Because if, if they were de dealing with, for instance, if somebody wanted to come in now FDI and cite something in, in the southwest or in the or north central or whatever, um, uh, the idea right now probably is that that's not where you go and start your negotiations from. Maybe You start from Abuja. And that's a problem right there. And that, of course, is a problem. You see, in addition to what he said, I would have, you were talking about political economy. How do we make sure that all these zones, and he has explained that each zone can actually be viable. You know, sometimes when you don't have something, you can do a lot with your brain. Mm -hmm. I went to Pro Park um, exhibition last week, and we were talking about agriculture. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned to them that the Minister of Labor is not working. If the Minister of Labor is working, there is no need for unemployment in Nigeria because the agri business needs a lot of extension services. I would have expected the Minister of Labor to be, you know, um, connecting with those ministries mm -hmm. that, you know, he can readily say, oh, yes, I can provide you with 10,000 uh, people. I can provide for extension of services yeah. on agri alone. Yeah, but, 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 that's we, not, that, but that's not a result of um, uh, not, not having a restructured system, is it? That probably is just a result of maybe a cluelessness. I remember that. No, word. if we have a restructured system, there will be integration in whatever we do. Okay. At I got, the moment I, you find ministries, they will just work at their own, mm -hmm. you know, this is my okay. ministry, this is my office. Yes, okay. Good morning, uh, Hassan in Lekki. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Thank you for, call, for calling. Good morning, Mrs. Morenike Ashaye. Good morning. And good morning, Mr. Chuku. Good morning. Uh, I listen to all of you with rapt attention. It seems we are confused. Let me start with Mr. Yori. He says some people are scared of restructuring. Nobody is scared of restructuring. What we are scared of 
is people don't have any template and they don't have a positive change of mind towards the restructuring. Um, that is number one. And our own concern is about Nigeria, not about one segment of Nigeria, because we are interdependent. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to Mrs. Morenike. She made mention of NGOs allocating money to the people. This NGO, let me make very, let me make one thing very clear to you. Only very few are objective. A lot of NGOs are 419. They take money from Melinda Gates. They took money from Ford Foundation. They took money from Benjamin Foundation. They took money from Nambote Foundation. Name them. And they don't do anything. A lot of people give their self-employment by, by, by establishing NGOs. The problem with Nigeria is sincerity of purpose. Are we sincere to drive the restructuring? The answer is no. Thank you very much yeah, for calling in, Alaji Hassan. Appreciate your call. Um, I don't know if you wanted Mrs. Ashaye to respond to anything. Actually, uh, most of the NGOs uh, are actually established because of their interest in social service. As he has said, we have seen a lot of our nights all over the place, not necessarily only in NGOs, even in government. Yes. You know. But I was expecting, if Dan Juma Foundation is going to give anybody money to do something, like they do in, uh, overseas, they monitor these NGOs. They tell them they cannot spend more than 10, uh, 15%, mm -hmm. between 10 to 15% of money given to them, you know, to do whatever project they want to do. They monitor them. They send people. So if Dan Juma Foundation is to give money, and it's not monitoring, so intentionally he's giving that money away, is not for that particular project because anybody who has a foundation and is into social responsibility or social service you must monitor what you are giving money for i'm not quarreling about the ngo bill but my quarrel is that like everybody has said we have enough laws to take care of that mm. the federal inland revenue service is there every NGO must submit accounts. And it, the fact that you are NGO doesn't mean you, can, you will not pay tax. If you do anything outside that your NGO, mm. you know, which brings you income, the revenue office will charge it to tax. And they have been going around. Okay. So it's not okay. that they are not well, doing uh, their... Hopefully we are efficient there because you know there are inefficiencies in a lot of no, places they, in they are, They've actually been tackling <coughs> the NGOs. The okay. FRS has, has been tackling the NGOs. Okay, uh, we got Solo coming in from Watford in the UK. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Polari. Thank you very much for calling in. Yori, please. Uh, okay, Yori. Um... um Thank you very much. I align myself uh, totally with uh, Johnson. Um, we have uh, a problem, you know, with uh, the structure of our federation as in terms of, you know, true fiscal federalism. Mm -hmm. If present system we are, we, are, we are creating does not encourage production, it encourages laziness. Instead of Baking, thinking of baking cake, we think of sharing. Everything we think of is usually revenue allocation formula, which cannot work. Now, we, have, we need to have productive federating units that can generate, can through their resources, generate production that can run the economy. Now, there is fear quite all right. You know, some people don't want restructuring because of the fear of losing the benefits you know, are coming from oil. It is an economy that is depending on oil too much. So we don't do any other thing. We depend on oil that, that thrives on rent collection and commission. That cannot help us. Let us not be afraid of anything. Somebody said, somebody once was it's quoted as saying, one judge either said, everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. <laughs> Let us not allow fear to yes, yes. our developmental goals. Mm. Mm. We should be bold enough to say, look, 
let us give back the power to the federating units, let them generate you know, resources, be productive, and let the economy develop. Thank you very much, Solo, for calling in. Appreciate your call. I've got to go on another break. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the home stretch now, and we've been looking at um, fiscal federalism, the challenges to it, and the benefits if we can actually do it, the political will, uh, all sorts of things maybe slowing the progress. But uh, perhaps we can also look at trying to determine the extent to which uh, this administration, and in particular President Muhammad Buhari, is committed to what is on his own papers books, uh, his own party's books yeah, of restructuring fiscal federalism, causing the National Assembly to, you know, amend the Constitution to allow for it. Uh, but he wants everything else, including foreign direct investment. Is there a contradiction in the way we're going, or are there inefficiencies if we continue the way we're continuing? Well, in the first place, um, when you talk of foreign direct investment, foreign direct investment goes to countries that have strong economic prospects. There are several factors a foreign direct investor will look at. What's the political environment? What's the economic prospect? Which sector am I going, going to? What says on the market? What's a, what are the enabling laws? And do I have the supporting infrastructure to make sure that my cost of production is low okay. and I will become competitive? A lot of those factors are currently not present in the country. And that's why if you look at our ease of doing business in the country, we rate we, we very low. Okay. Eh? Uh -huh. On, on the ease of doing business. business. And even if we look at Global Competitive Index, Nigeria's rating is about 167. When are countries like Rwanda are about 58. So, so how come? How come Rwanda is able to be 58 and we are 160 It's very simple. Uh, it's very simple, Yuri. Rwanda has only five provinces. We have 36 provinces uh, that are distribution athletes. South Africa has only nine provinces. The landmass of South Africa is several times bigger than Nigeria. But we have 36 states. <laughs> but let's go back to your question on foreign direct investment. And I will combine that with the issue uh, of the... Reverend Dominic, uh, I beg your pardon. Let, okay, let me take Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Yuri. There's a delay. The, 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 the TV is running back on me. So let me go on talk so you can listen to me. Yuri, one argument, one argument <clears throat> I have not joined is this uh, restructuring. So I am totally confused about it. Do you know the reason? Let's take a simple example. Structure, with the kind of people that govern Nigeria today, will it change their mindset and attitude? Simple example is what just happened in National Assembly since July and now. A speak of this order for him to you back in and pay back every cover that took. The speaker refused to sway him in. The man went back to Supreme Court for Supreme Court to turn around and change their judgment. The men took their ground and were awarded one million. Yesterday, this lady went to National Assembly for 40 years. The speaker refused. What is the reason? That one of the boys or girls from the constituents of this lady wrote something wrong about, against him in the first book. Now, woman should go back and face the, the young boy before he would sweat in. If we restructure and give Tambawa not eat to govern, will it change Tambawa attitude? The problem of Nigeria is not restructure. First of all, it's attitude. How could a man know what is right and do wrong? We, do, we talk about Awolowo. When Awolowo was in power, if Awolowo is the type of people we have today, will you build the rest of Ibadan? Will you build the Coco House? It's about a man's character and authority. The best governor to have seen in South East in my lifetime was Chief Honor Kambakwe, who governed three states and created industry. See, today, nobody has achieved what that man achieved in three states. All right, then. Th th thank you very much, Reverend Dominic. I've got to interrupt you now, uh, but appreciate your call, you know, greatly. Um, I interrupted you, you know. Um, you, did you, you wanted to, to land on, you were telling us what people actually look at the, when they want to bring their foreign investment into the country, yes, so and that a lot of what they look for... Yeah, a lot of those enabling factors are not present in, the, in, the, in, the, in our economy today. 
And that's where my concerns are. And when I talked about that oil will be, at some point will become irrelevant, and we have not built those structures that will lead to attracting, making this an investment-friendly environment. So, so what you're saying is that we, we've run out of time, actually. Yeah, we had, they they don't, don't have time. Let me tell you, Yuri. In the past 20 years, I'm in, I'm in investment banking, and I can tell you with certainty. In the past 20 years, we do not have more than five foreign companies that have come to set up productive activity in this country. Five. We don't have five. In fact, the, of the biggest that have come, apart from the, 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 the telecom sector where you have uh, MT and Econet that came from outside the country. Of course, you know Glow is a local breed. Eh? Then all the investment you are going that you have in this country that are coming from the foreign direct investment, I'm not going to portfolio investment, mm. are mostly in the oil and gas sector. And that oil and gas sector investment are include exploration. So they take the product, there's no beneficiation, there's no value creation along the value chain. So foreign investors are not crazy about our environment. One, the cost of production is low. You do not have the infrastructure, enabling infrastructure. You don't have the enabling laws. You are dealing with security issues. Despite the fact that we, in Africa we have the largest market, if you go, go to our uh, uh, global competition index, you see that our strong, only strong point is our market size. Now, would restructuring, Mrs. Ashaye, to, to, to round off almost, would, how would restructuring address these problems? Because the point that Reverend Dominic was made is that, look, this restructuring, I'm a bit scared of it, because the mental orientation of our people, the attitude, uh, he's not sure that restructuring would change anything. Actually, I think ex-president Obasan just said what we need is to restructure our minds. Yes, I agree totally that we need to restructure our minds. Because if we don't restructure our minds, whatever structure we even put in place may not work, just as Reverend uh, was saying. Reverend Dominic. He was saying. But when you talk about restructuring, it's what we call rearrangement. Okay. You know, rearrangement of certain structures that we put on ground for political, social, and economic development of the nation. So if we but say- But that means we have to agree, President Muhammadu Buhari or this administration, his administration, has to agree that the arrangement is not the most beneficial. It's not. But we, because if, if he doesn't agree that, he's not going to do <clears throat> anything about it. It's not the most beneficial. Or is the most beneficial? No, it's the not. Current the, the, the current arrangement is oh, not yeah, the, the most. Definitely, yes, is not the most beneficial. I, I, I'm, so I, President I'm, Buhari I, and I'm his administration sure. have to be aware, have to believe this I'm, before they can be encouraged to to even no, begin to tamper with the no, whole idea. You, you see, I think the party understands that the current situation is not the most beneficial, and that is why uh, Senator uh, Tinubu could say that it is part of their manifesto mm. to have fiscal federalism. Mm. So they knew that. So for the, but doing anything for, the, about it. for the president not to put it as number one agenda mm -hmm. is what I don't understand. Well. You know, but what I will say <clears throat> is that when we are rearranging, we need that rearrangement is necessary. Like in the National Assembly, do we need two tiers of National Assembly? Okay. We may say one. Mm -hmm. If for houses of assembly, do we need 36? We may say zona house of assembly. So that, that is the rearrangement, so that we will have money for taxpayers. We will have money to do things that people will be happy about. Well, thank you very much, madam. Um, we, we, we really, it's so interesting a conversation. I'd really love to go on, but we've completely run out of time. Mrs. Moreneke Babinti Ashai, chairman of accounting, education, and uh, research services, as well as uh, uh, chartered, being a chartered accountant, tax specialist, uh, educator, and uh, a former public service operator. Thank you very much for coming Thank on the program. Thank you very much for having uh, me. And also Mr. Johnson Chuku, you know, finance expert, managing director, Kauri Assets Management Limited, investment banker, and economic analyst. Thank you very much, as always, for coming on the program. My pleasure. Indeed. So that's our program. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.